Hello, I'm Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. This is part two of my video about using lapping techniques to sharpen tools. And in particular, we're looking at sharpening plane irons. In part one, you'd have seen me introduce the various equipment, including this super duper honing guide from Veritas. And I also showed you how I tidied up the primary bevel on this plane iron. Now we're going to do some lapping. Now I've got three different sets of lapping film available to me. Already mounted on my float glass, I've got the set that I bought from Lee Valley. And this is 15 micron down to 0.1 micron. I've actually had a practice go with this already. And I've got two more sets. I've got some samples which I received from 3M. And I've also got uh, these sheets which I got from Axminster Power Tools here in the UK. Now the lapping process is terribly simple. In part one, you saw how I mounted the plane iron into the Veritas honing guide. And that's still exactly as it was when we were doing that video. You then need to mount your lapping film onto your float glass plate. Now this is the Lee Valley lapping film and it has a sticky back. Now it's important when you stick these onto your piece of float glass that you don't have any air bubbles. You then take some very fine oil, and this is a sort of sewing machine quality oil, and put that on your sheets. Now because these sheets have started out dry, I'm putting a, a reasonable amount, you don't have to put a huge amount, a reasonable amount on to start with. I'm just going to make sure that definitely covers the whole of the sheet. You then start with your coarsest grade, very carefully place the uh, guide with the iron in it on there and you just use a forward and backward motion like this. Now the majority of the cutting should be done on the stroke that comes towards you and that's where you would put just a bit of pressure as it comes towards you. Try not to put any pressure as you go forward because there's always a chance, remote as it may be, that you might dip slightly and nick uh, your lapping film and uh, that, that would then uh, ruin it. So more pressure when you come back towards you, less pressure as you go away. And it's a matter of judgment how many times you need to do this to get a satisfactory amount of cut at each grade. But from my practice go I did before I started filming, I reckon one needs probably no more than a dozen little goes on each. Then you move on to the next one and continue the process. And then finally, the very fine one. Now it's possible that at this stage you've now got a little bit of a burr on this top edge. And for me the easiest way is to use my diamond stone with a little bit of the fine oil and I'm just going to turn this over like so very carefully just get rid of that burr and with that done I can inspect my handiwork now don't forget to take great care with this because this is now seriously sharp and oh <laughs> that age-old method of checking uh, is not recommended do not do it uh, find another way of testing the sharpness now in the Veritas instructions for their honing guide, it said that you can put a micro bevel onto the plane iron or your chisel, whatever it is you're sharpening, by rotating this knob here into the six o'clock position. So the little indent there is now pointing downwards. And that's effectively increased the angle very slightly. So now when I do a couple of laps, I'm now putting a very tiny micro bevel on at the very tip of the blade. Doesn't take very many goes because of course the surface area now is very small indeed. And there we go. And again, just in case one can take off any burr that may have occurred very carefully and gently. Now if I didn't have my float glass mounted in this frame, it would be perfectly reasonable to do this on one of your, the side of one of your sheets. Now you need to take care now because this plane iron is seriously sharp. <laughs> and 
Um, it's the sharpest I've ever seen it. And uh, may maybe Dad would have made it a little bit sharper using his old-fashioned techniques. I just don't know. But I'd love to have been able to show him just how sharp this blade is now. So I'm setting that at uh, what would be about a sixteenth of an inch, uh, about, about one and a half millimetres. And uh, I'm just going to tighten that up to a final tighten. Again, remember, that's very sharp. Be very careful not to damage it or to not to damage yourself. In that goes. And I like to just give that a little wiggle, like so. And then we'll get it adjusted. And we'll take it over and test it. Well, I must say that's not bad. I've taken my piece of float glass out of its frame and turned it over so that I can put some of the 3M product onto it. And I've got it sitting on this white sheet here so you can see it reasonably clearly. I could have used some of this anti-slip matting underneath, but I thought it would be easier for you to see what's going on by doing this. I've taken the uh, iron from my Stanley number no. 7 jointer, uh, which is uh, a good plane to push around when it's cold in the workshop. And I'm putting it into the Veritas honing guide, setting it up exactly the same way that I showed you in the first video. And just making sure this is done nice and evenly. That's fine. Turn it over carefully. And now remove that. Check that that's locked. It is. Make sure this is in the 12 o'clock position. Nearly forgot. And I then would make a start. Now I'm going to use the same technique as before. I'm just going to make sure the primary bevel is in good order. I'm actually going to do it first and only time on my diamond block uh, because I've used this jointer a fair bit and it's not in too bad a condition. And it won't take long to get this primary bevel good enough for me to take over to the lapping film. Now there's no way that I can compare one product with another without scientific instruments. But I will tell you if I feel that uh, a particular product doesn't operate as it should or if I think that my uh, planar blade isn't as sharp as it ought to be. So what I've got here, I've got uh, 30 micron, 12 micron, 5 micron and 0.3 micron from 3M. And the interesting thing is, is that the 5 micron does not have a sticky back. Put some oil onto the surface and then put the sheet on that. Again, try and get rid of as much air as possible. And it should adhere to the surface pretty well because of a sort of vacuum effect. And yep, that, that seems to be pretty good. Now I'm starting with the 30 micron from 3M. Now the interesting thing about the, the 3M product is it was sent to me as uh, sheets which are um, the sort of standard American letter size piece of paper uh, which is I think it's 11 by 8 or something inches something like that. Uh, so I was able to cut each of those uh, into three pieces and they're still quite a generous size as you can probably see now I'm on to 5 micron now, and of course this does not have any glue underneath. Uh, this just has a, a smear of oil to hold it in place, and it is indeed staying exactly where it should be. Now I don't have uh, my own frame on here. I can take this to the side of the bench and do a deburr process, just like that. Now Veritas do actually recommend that before you start the whole process of sharpening that you polish uh, the underside of your uh, planar blades like this. Well, that certainly is sharp and I'll try the non-scientific test. I think that's pretty reasonable. Uh, now we're now going to put the micro bevel on. So I'm turning this by 180 degrees so that that uh, is pointing downwards, that little uh, indent is pointing downwards, and on goes the micro bevel. 
just a few goes should be sufficient at each grit. Now another recommendation from Veritas is that you can put uh, what they call a back bevel. Uh, I think uh, we used to call it a counter bevel. I can't remember. But anyway, uh, a back bevel. Uh, and that is a bevel on the opposite side. I don't intend doing that, but the instructions with the Veritas honing guide are crystal clear. That is absolutely super. That is really, really good. I think <laughs> probably the best I've ever had it. So yeah, it works. Excellent. Now, Axminster to Power Tools have sent me a sample of each of the three grades of lapping film they do. They do a 9 micron, a 15 micron, and a 22 micron. I'm going to take the entire piece of the 22 micron and stick it here. Uh, I quite like that. It's got its grade printed on the back. And one of the things you can do with lapping film is to lap the bottom of a plane. That's that. And now, making sure there's no bits of glue or anything silly on the underside of the plane, I'm now going to uh, lap the base. And as you can see, I've decided to put the anti-slip matting underneath so that I can do this with a little bit more vigour. But you get the idea. So, persevere, and one can then get quite a reasonable finish. I've still actually got a little bit of a hollow here. You may just be able to detect it. It's interesting, the, the blade from the record plane it was in pretty sorry state. Um, but I've taken it to the oil stone, got it up to uh, a reasonable primary bevel, and now I can now take it to the Axminster uh, lapping film. Now, once you've got the primary bevel done on your oil stone the very first time, you should never need to go back to your oil stone. You should only ever need, in future, to go to your lapping film, unless you have some sort of accident with the blade itself. Now, at the end of the day, when you've finished using your honing guide, uh, you do need to clean it up. Uh, now, if you've been using this with water, then you'd really need to make sure that you get all of the water out of all of the little bearing places in here. But because I'm using oil, and I really do recommend that you do the same, you only need to wipe off the excess oil before you put this away in a drawer. Well, I hope over these two videos I've given you a, a reasonable insight into the world of lapping. Well, I certainly know what the future is for me to be able to look after my lovely planes from Veritas. For me, I'm getting rid of that water stone and I'm going to stick with this for the future. If I've got a primary bevel that needs a lot of serious attention, I'll either use my old carborundum stone or some very coarse lapping film. But the star of all of this, to be honest, is the honing guide from Veritas. Without this, you can't get the smoothness and the accuracy that you need to be really good at this technique. Now, I've used film from Lee Valley, from Axminster Power Tools, and direct from 3M. And I can't criticise any one of them in particular at all. But in the United Kingdom, as far as value for money goes, uh, the 3M product is probably going to win. You must look up on the internet in your own area which is the best for you. So, I've made a total transformation. I've seen the future, and I'm so very grateful to Michael Forster uh, for really just kicking me back into lapping once more. My brother will be pleased, and if Dad were here, he'd be delighted that I finally found a way of keeping my tools really sharp. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>